glorify you, O Lord. I magnify your name. Lord of glory, I worship you, O Jesus. Not my will, O Lord, but thine will be done, O Lord. I worship you, O God. You are great, O Lord. You are mighty, O Jesus. Lord, oh God, I worship you, oh Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, he can't have a whole Lord, I worship you, O God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I worship you, O Jesus. I lift you up. I magnify your name. Lord, you are great. Lord, you are mighty. Lord, oh God, that mighty name. That mighty name that we glorify. That mighty name that we sing about. Would you pray right now in the Holy Ghost? so and get yourself accumulated with the presence of God and what is moving in this place. Into 
the courts with praise and thanksgiving. If you want your miracles, start worshiping. If you want praise, you're going to have to enter into it first. And when you worship, you're entering into that place. You're entering into that atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, the angels just walked into this place. What you're feeling, that's not emotion. What you're feeling, you're feeling the presence of God in this place. There is, there is Shaka Kalaba, Ikandalaba Hataye. There is Shaka Lava. Don't stop, don't stop, Ikaba Hataye. Your Kolo Hosaka Lava Lava, Ikandalaba Dama Kalaba Yasada. That's your feeling. Those are the angels. That's your feeling. You're feeling them. And they're starting to manifest themselves. Lobo Show in this place. What you're feeling is the Holy of Holies. Would you stand right now? 
on your feet in the name of Jesus. And would you give up a shout of praise? Would you worship that name in the name of Jesus? Would you glorify him? Hallelujah, Jesus.
Lord, you thank him for life. Lord, you thank him that he has preserved you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody, would you lift up your praise? Would you put a voice to your praise this evening? For out of the fruit of our lips, the Bible says, to 
saved and seek those that was, that was lost. He Somebody talk in tongues right now, but with stammering lips in another tongue, will he speak to this people saying, this is the rest, and this is the refreshing, and we will hear it, O oh God, and we will believe it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not how I imagine it to be, Lord, all glorious. 
with the limelight and the spotlight, but to be used by you, O oh God, according to your will. And to be willing, O oh Lord. Anybody willing in this place to be used, O oh God? To be used to be the body of Christ. He makes this promise to those that are willing to be used that all things will work together for the good. As you and I remain in love with God. As you remain called according to how he uses you to his purpose. He makes that promise all things will work out. Don't get tunnel vision to lock yourself into what's happening here and now. See beyond. I said see beyond your circumstances. See beyond what it is here. God knows his plan for your life. He is confident in his ability to save you. Anybody believe that right now? Yes. Yes. Oh, the presence of the Lord is in this place. The glory of God, the glory of Jesus Christ is in this house. He has inhabited your praises. And he has come close to you, closer perhaps than what you have been this week. For a reason, for a purpose. That you and I would be willing to be expended for God, for the purposes of God. In Jesus' name. I pray that as time progresses and we live out the great outpouring of the Holy Ghost promised by God to Abraham, that we will have the surrender at that point to do whatever God wants us to do. Sometimes we have a preconception of what and how we want to be used of God. We want to paint it all glamorous with lights and every favorable and every blessing that we can think about. But there's a balance to that. Most of the disciples, they died a violent death. Are you willing to be used to the Lord? Now there's a balance that three Hebrew boys, God, also delivered them. There's a balance to all of this. Daniel was delivered from the lion's den. Served three kings that were world powers. So God's able to do both. It just depends what his will is. Would you pray one more time that you would want nothing less but the will of God, the perfect will of God. And that he will enable you through his grace and his strength. For by grace, through faith, we are saved and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Lord, we are your workmanship. We are your offspring, O oh God. Now, the Bible says, you are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we shall be like him. When we see him, hallelujah. What a promise from the Lord when you begin to study the promises of God to the church. You will quickly realize that to present our bodies a living sacrifice, it's a reasonable service. Have you ever wondered that Jesus, when John's disciples, John the Baptist, was sent to question him because he, John felt forgotten. He didn't feel like he deserved to go to jail. His head was about to be cut off to be used of God that way. And so he sent his disciples and he said, go, go ask him, are, are you he or should we look for another? And Jesus did not really defend himself personally, but he said, tell John what you see. The, 
lame begin to walk, the blinded eyes begin to see, the dumb begin to speak, and oh, by the way, tell them that the gospel is preached to the poor. Oh, and one more thing before you leave. That, tell him, blessed is he who is not offended in me. And then he says this, which really highlights the great promises that God has for the church only, for you. He said, out of all the prophets, so you talk about Elijah, Elisha, Moses, all the prophets. There's no greater prophet than John. That's what Jesus said. Out of all the prophets in the Old Testament, there was no greater prophet than John the Baptist. Now, when you think about this, John did not really perform a lot of miracles, did he? But he did baptize unto repentance a lot of people. Preparing the way of the Lord. But then Jesus said this, but he that is least in the kingdom, he that is least in the church, he that is least in the kingdom, how do you get to the kingdom? You repent of your sins, you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're part, you're born again into the kingdom. If you're not born again, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Are you with me tonight? And he said, he that is least in the kingdom is greater than John. That's you. Well, I thought that would make you shout unless you didn't understand what I just said. Would you pray for revelation right now? The great promises that God has given you as the church. The great uh, privilege that God has bestowed upon each and every one of us that we are called the sons of God. And we're going to rule and reign with him one day and we're going to have a glorified bodies like him one day in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is his breath, the infilling of the Holy Ghost that will give us that privilege. Would you worship him? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Would you thank him for that promise? Would you believe that promise in the name of Jesus Christ? Come on, don't let anything hinder your worship. In Jesus' name, the more you study the promises of God to the church, the more and more you realize how blessed you really are. And that whatever you have to go through in this life, it is worth it to make it to heaven. It is worth it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Would you lift up your hands one more time? Or would you just... Love Him, love His presence, love His Word, love His promises, love Jesus. Lord, we're not seeking for anything, any blessing, but we're seeking You. We want You, O oh God. For in Thee, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Help that to be a reality for all of us, Lord, that when we are in Your presence, that we will have that that completeness, that fullness of joy, that when you begin to use us in your right hand in these last days, that we will experience the euphoria, that pleasure, oh God, forevermore. Oh, it is unending in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you make a joyful noise? Would you clap? Would you shout? However you feel like worshiping the Lord this evening in the name good to feel the presence of the Lord and to be in his presence and among all brothers and sisters. If you would continue to pray for Brother JC for a couple of days now. He is home. He is recovering. I've got a prayer request today from the couchman. If you're not feeling good, please keep them in prayer, Brother Sister Couchman, that God would touch their bodies. And would you take dominion over fear? Would you pray right now as you pray for these three? Would you take dominion over fear? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we take dominion over fear, O oh Lord, for you have not given us 
the spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I release your will, your divine healing upon J.C. God, Ruth and Lord, the couchmen, so oh God, the couples, O oh Lord, and others, O oh God, that need healing for Mel, O oh Lord, her family, Lawrence, God, the Spurgeons, O oh Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you, if you know somebody that needs healing, would you just pray for them right now? Would you pray and would you believe in the power of prayer? Would you believe in the one that answers prayer? Oh, for your effectual fervent prayer. Oh, it avails much. No prayer is ever forgotten. God scores it. And he answers in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Good to have all of you in the house of the Lord this I want to encourage you to keep being faithful to your 24-hour prayer chain, your one-hour prayer. And we're going to continue that till the Lord leads us otherwise in Jesus' name. This Sunday is our Christmas service, 10 a.m. and potluck as well. We're looking forward to that. Amen. And then we're still going to have service on the 23rd. Amen. And the 31st, which is a Thursday, will replace the last Wednesday of the month, and we will have our end of the year service with the potluck and games, and we're going to pray and have a service and sing and have fun and greet the new year right here at the Lighthouse in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. God is good. Amen. The Lord is good, and I'm so thankful for the Lord. And I pray that God continue to use each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you, if you would, when you wake up in the morning, would you do this? That you would take dominion and authority over spirits and over things that you are facing in your families, perhaps. And just believe that God has given you that authority. Would you do that? Yeah, amen. And you start your day that way. The Bible says he has given you power or authority over all the power or the ability of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Right. Amen. And having said all of that, if you're following the news and what's happening, there is a surge of the virus. And so uh, we want to be careful. Amen. As you move around, I'm going to ask you to just put your mask. As you move around, you can take it off in your seat. And especially this Sunday, I've instructed Sister Charlene to, to be vigilant and asking people how they're feeling. And take, as we have been taking temperatures and having them wear a mask. And we're not operating by fear, but by wisdom. Amen. Amen. So help me with that. And we're just going to... Keep on right along in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister. Jesus' name, because there are some scriptures 
that we are going to read. And if you don't have one, that's fine. I will read it anyway. In Jesus' name. As I was thinking about the end of this year and the coming of the new year, I told the Lord that for the first time in my life, I will not be making my own goals for the new year. And then he put a thought on my mind that for next year, yes, 2021, that I will need to rewrite our Discipleship Level 1 course to include all of the foundational teachings that he has been revealing to us this year. Amen. And so I wrote that down on my whiteboard in my little office. And some of you know that I already rewrote lessons five and six, okay? Um, so I'll have, what, eight more lessons to go, amen, by the first quarter of 2021. Um, that will be ready, but I believe that God wants you, all of you that are part of the Lighthouse Church, to have this resource in your hands, amen, by next year, so that you can be ready to teach it. Because, as Pastor was saying, when the end time harvest comes, we're going to be busy both witnessing and discipling souls. Amen. Some of us might be used more in proclaiming or witnessing the gospel, while others might be more involved in teaching or discipling new converts. But I believe that many of you will be involved in both. So it's time to be ready. In Jesus' name. And here's one important concept that we need to include in our discipleship teaching that we have missed to teach. And Pastor said earlier, what is the entry point into his church, into the church of God, into the kingdom of God? It's being born again, right, of the water and of the spirit. But what is our next step? That will be a continual process till the Lord comes. What do we need to do? Die to ourselves. Amen? And so that's the title of my lesson tonight. It's dying to ourself so that Christ can live in us. Amen? We must die to ourselves so that he can live through us and bring life to the lost. For when we apply this concept, it will truly change us. And God wants us to change, to keep growing in his image, amen? amen. For our change, our transformation, inside and out, is the evidence of his power working in us and through us. Yeah. So we need to die to ourselves. Right. We need to die to our independent will. Right. We need to die to the lusts and habits of our flesh. Right. We need to die to the standards or expectations of man. Right. For he is our leader, right? He right. is the Lord. He's the one. His standards is who we should follow. Yeah. What's in the word of God? Not man. Right. Not traditions of man, no. Right. What's in the word of God. We need to die to the earthly treasures of this world because they're all temporary, amen? Right. Temporary. So we do all this so that Christ may be formed in yes. us. So that we can walk in his righteousness yeah, and yeah. so that we can bear his fruit. He's looking yeah. for Yes, yes. He is looking for fruit. Read all his parables. Yep. Read all about it. It's all about He's going to look for our fruit. Yep. But how do we get that? We die to ourselves and allow Christ to live and be birthed in us, to grow in us, in Jesus' name. And how have we been doing with that? 
Are you dying to yourself? And is Christ growing in you? Do I see some nods? All right. Or how about this? Have any old fleshly habits died? They're dying. And any new godly habits formed? All right. I like to see that. In Jesus' name, praise God. You know, as I have been studying for this, the Lord has been showing me that this process of dying to ourselves should be progressive. Grow. We keep growing. We don't just do something and then not expect anything. No. It is as it is a daily dying to ourselves. It is also a daily growing in Christ. We die to live in Christ. If we are just dying to die, that is incomplete. For we die to eventually bear fruit in Christ. So how do we die to ourselves? How do we die to ourselves? What do you think? Okay, that's good. Casting your cares. Anything else? Change habits, okay, yes, we do that. And um, what what helps us what, to change habits? Asking. Prayer. Prayer. Okay, all right. Being steadfast in our prayer. Yes, repentance. Okay, these are good answers. They, they all connect to it. So I would say a good start is repentance, amen? And we're going to talk about passing your prayers too. Thank you for mentioning that. But let's start with repentance. And let me tell you that true repentance produces results. Right. Otherwise, it is just remorse. Right. Or merely a verbal confession of your sins. Okay? For I believe that true repentance involves dying to those appetites of your flesh. And dying to the independent ways of our spirit and will. As we take a closer look at repentance, I'm going to read, and you're going to join and help me read, three verses of the same chapter, but I want you to see the flow of it so you can better understand the context, right? When we read, when we study the Word of God, okay? we got to understand the flow of it, the context of it. We just don't focus on one verse by itself. We need to understand what God is trying to tell us through His Word. It's in 2 Corinthians 7, and we're going to start with verse 1, and I will be reading from King James Version. All right. And when we start reading there, just stay on there. We're going to continue on to other verses on the same chapter. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Apostle Paul is teaching us here that we need to be free from the effects of our flesh and unyielded Spirit. When we leave our spirit alone, it will do things contrary yep. to God's will. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say unyielded spirit. Unyielded to God. All right? And then on verse 10, if you can um, move to verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. You see that again? Godly sorrow worketh repentance. To salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world work of death. So, godly sorrow is good, but not the sorrow of the world. Okay, we need to be healed from the sorrow of the world. We want godly sorrow that, as Sister Margie was saying, changes our habits. Amen? Changes us. The godly sorrow. So, in this verse, um, Apostle Paul introduces the work of repentance. Through godly sorrow. It's a sorrow that motivates us. Amen? Isn't it amazing? It's all because of God. His grace gives us the power to change. So it's his godly sorrow that brings us to repentance. Amen? All glory to you, Lord. Everything comes from 
around you. So through his godly sorrow, so that we can be clean and clear from the effects of our flesh and unyielded spirit. But verse 11, the next verse, I want to say that this next verse is loaded. As it talks about the power of repentance. On what we should be experiencing when we repent and even how we should be repenting. All right? Verse 11. For behold the self-same thing that ye sorrow after a godly sort. What carefulness. Can you say that? Careful. Carefulness. It brought in you, yea, what clearing. Say clearing. Clearing. Of yourselves, yea, yeah. what indignation. Say that. Yea, what fear? Say fear. Yea, what vehement desire? Say that. Vehement desire. Yea, what zeal? Zeal. Yea, what revenge? Last one. Yeah. In all things, you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. There are at least seven works of repentance that this verse mentions that we are going to look into. And by the way, this is in your discipleship lesson on repentance. And when I recently taught this to one of my students, Sister Mary, when I taught on repentance, I said, wow, because God was giving me this revelation that I, I, I haven't seen before the depth of it. Like, wow, this is what repentance does. And I said, Lord, help us. Help us to have this revelation, amen? Because God can change us. God can change us and make you more like him to be his light, amen? When we can bear his fruit through us in Jesus' name. So seven works of repentance. Number one is carefulness. Carefulness. What is carefulness? It is a disciplined watchfulness lest you sin. When you truly repented, you become careful not to commit the same sin. Right. You would also become more conscious of the trigger points so that you can avoid that sin and keep avoiding that sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Carefulness. Lord, I want to be careful. There's a clearing, amen? Repentance will produce that a clearing. It leaves behind your guilt. Amen? There will be no more guilt pulling or nagging on your spirit when you truly repent of your sins as you die to it in repentance. Amen. Here's the dying. Okay? There's the dying here. Number three, indignation. What is that? A hatred of sin. I think that's very powerful. If we can learn this and have this, a hatred of sin, a hatred of sin and anything considered unrighteous or offensive to God. We need to love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. Amen? Amen. And you will no longer be tempted by the things that you hate. That's a guarantee. There, there's going to be no more pull on you. In Jesus' name. Receive that in the name of Jesus. This is powerful. Love the things of God. Hate the things of the enemy. Luke 16, 13 says, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and now. Number three work of repentance is fear. Fear of what? Fear of the results of sin. This is a godly fear. Wherein you dread the harmful effects of your sin. Wherein you really care about the damage of your sin so that you choose to die to it. Amen. Fear the results of sin. Number five and number six. 
I'll say number five, they're related. The heaven desire. It's a longing for righteousness, for God's righteousness, and delight in obeying God, seeking his kingdom. Amen? That's your desire. It's a strong desire. And number six, zeal is a fervor for God and his cause. These two are healthy motivators that will keep us farther from falling into sin. When we are consumed by our hunger for his righteousness, we won't have the time to fall into sin. Because we are so full of his righteousness working in us. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, keep our eyes, our heart upon you, Lord. In Jesus' name, that there's no room in us to sin, to look at the other side in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number seven, the last work of repentance is revenge. To be clear from accusation of the enemy. Revenge gives you freedom. Freedom. True repentance will give you that freedom in your spirit as you are convinced that the enemy's accusation against you is now clear. When that sin is dead in you, dead in you, the enemy has no power to condemn you. Right. You are totally free. Amen. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the works of repentance. Now let's talk about the application of this. What is a habit of your flesh that you still need to overcome? Do we have some? Yeah. I know we're still all in the growing process, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Think about it. Then I want you to evaluate it using what I just taught on the seven words of repentance. Think about it. Okay? And I'm just going to give you two examples so you have an idea. So as you spend your prayer time, you can apply this revelation, this part of the Word of God. Okay, I'm just going to throw in there the sin of drunkenness. Okay, I know nobody's going to get offended here. Okay, right? Sin of drunkenness. Okay. Are you careful not to get drunk? Or do you avoid hanging around with the wrong people or going to the wrong places? Okay, I'm applying the works of repentance. Do you hate the tendency of getting drunk? Do you fear the results when you get drunk? Okay. Okay, how about a common one, anger? We all go through that, right? Okay. Maybe you can relate to this one. Okay. Are you careful not to be angry. Huh. Okay. Do you hate the tendency of being angry? Do you fear the results of your anger? If you answered no to these questions, then there's work. <laughs> then perhaps you haven't truly repented of your sin. Or perhaps there are certain spirits or thought patterns that you have allowed that is hindering you from dying to your sins. Maybe you do experience godly sorrow when you commit that sin, but maybe you also justify it with your own righteousness. Or maybe we have become too self-centered to care about how others are affected by our offensive words or actions. Something to really think about. If you really want God to change you, you got to really want it. you got to really hate that sin got to really care about the people that are affected by that sin. It's a serious thing, right? 
but it's all in the Word of God. The power is there, amen? If we apply His Word, that scripture, that 2 Corinthians 7, 11, that we read, if we apply that, wow. Wow. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just want you to flow freely through us. That we don't have to be hindered by our flesh, yeah? Weaknesses that even cause division, right. right? We want to be free. Do you want to be free? In the name of Jesus. Let's just spend a little time. Let's, let's pray in tongues right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I lose spirit of repentance upon us, Lord. Spirit of repentance, oh God, teach us, Lord. Teach us, Lord, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I lose spirit of repentance upon your people, oh God. Lord, to hate sin, oh God. To hate that habit of sin, oh God. Lord, oh God, to have that delight, that hunger to serve you, oh God. To your seek your righteousness, oh God. To love your righteousness, oh God. Lord, to care, oh God, to care about the effects of that sin, oh God. Lord, to fear, oh God, the effects of that sin, oh God. That they may turn away, oh God. That they may make up their mind to turn away, oh God. To die to that sin in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now, repentance is a good start. But the dying process continues when we, Brother Paul mentioned it, cast all our cares unto the Lord. Casting all our cares unto the Lord. What is the opposite of casting our cares? It's control, right? Control. When we don't cast our cares to the Lord, leave it in his hands, we want to control. Okay, that's the opposite of casting our cares. Or fixing it ourselves, or not leaving it alone in peace. All right? One of the common hindrances of casting our cares unto the Lord is the, ready for me? Spirit of self-gratification. Wow. And there's probably other ways you can call that, okay? But that was an easy one that you will kind of understand. Self-gratification. A very selfish spirit. A very me. What can I get from this spirit? Okay? That's the self-gratification. Serving myself, okay? It's, it's, a, it's, it's also a form of idolatry. Okay? Yourself, okay? Very selfish and self-seeking. I'm going to read to you a verse that talks about the forms of this type of spirit. And I believe most of us are adults. I know we have young ones, but cover your ears if you need to. Okay? All right? Colossians 3, 5. For those who want to join with me. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication. Uncleanness. What is that? That's impurity. Inordinate affection. What's inordinate? It's excessive or obsessive. God doesn't like extreme stuff like that. Evil. Concupiscence. What is that? That's sexual desires. And covetousness, which is idolatry. All right? I know most of these involve the ungodly appetites of the body, right? If you, if you notice that in that verse. But one of them does not. Since covetousness involves what? Getting things. Okay? Does it involve the body, per se? Okay? Getting things. However, they have a common component of self gratification. You see that? Okay, 
And here's another verse that talks about covetousness and combines the other self-gratifying sins with it. Ephesians 5.5. 5. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going quick, but I'll read it if you're not there. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Similar, right? How it combines those sins together with covetousness about getting things, right? Now, I'm going to make a statement that might surprise you. But we need to be aware of this so that we can die through the spirit of self-gratification. Are you ready? All right. We are more covetous than what we are aware of. The symptoms of covetousness are when we desire or crave or needs and wants. Covetousness is the act of getting things that God's not given. Maybe this will make you save more money, right? 
when Jesus recruited them to be fishers of men? Or will you have an excuse that will disqualify you from being a laborer? Church, we are in training now. And if we can't see this now, what's coming, we won't see it when it happens. I understand that we have responsibilities to do and jobs to provide for our basic needs. But when that time comes, will you be ready to be sent out into the harvest? Will you be ready to drop everything? Yeah, me and my husband are already talking about that. That time comes. He's ready to quit his job. And I told my kids, you're ready to stop school. Amen. <laughs> yes. When God gives us that signal, in Jesus' name, we believe it. We believe it. In Jesus' name. Will you be ready to be sent out into the harvest, or will you be so consumed with your own life? with your own needs, that you will miss the call. Because there are those written in the Word of God that they missed the call. And so Colossians 3, verse 2, remind us to set our affection on things above. Amen? Supernatural things, and the things of God, and not on the temporal or the things on the earth. That's not where our treasure should be, because we will miss it. If our love is on the things of the world, we will miss it. All right, so we've talked about repentance, casting our cares, but I got one more thing I want to add in the subject of dying to ourselves, and that is forgiveness. Have you noticed it's part of the relational prayer and self-check, right? Because it's all about what? Surrendering to God, right? It's all the same, the same concept, the same thing that God has been trying to tell us. Yielding, surrender, forgiveness. For unforgiveness is another form of taking control. Wherein we seek vengeance. That's really our intent. For un un unoffensive act against us when we can't forgive. We feel that it is important for the other person to know the wrong that they've done to us, right? But we need to understand that when we fail to forgive others, that our unforgiveness removes the blood yep. over our sins. We need to realize the price. Because what does the word verse say? He won't forgive us if we can't forgive. Right? That's what the word of God says, right? Not me. The word of God says that. It's a dangerous thing to do. To not forgive. Because God can't forgive us when we don't forgive others. All right. Here's another way to see it, to deal, to deal with it if you're tempted to not to forgive, okay? We need to, it's all about dying, and we need to die to our rights <laughs> as a person, right? We have no rights. Because God's giving us so much more, amen? Jesus' name. We need to die to what we think we deserve. To the comfort, convenience we feel we need to have, the respect we need to have, right? Because if we don't, we'll keep getting offended. <laughs> it's gonna keep, we're going to keep feeling that way. So, you can, so that you can be completely delivered, not being offended. Just die to your rights. Right? As we die to ourselves, we need to die to our right on how we believe people should treat us. Instead, we need to release our control 
and let God take care of it. Yes. Because the reward of God's peace oh, yeah. is much more valuable than winning an argument. Always. Right. Holding on to an offense or grudge is just not worth it. No. No. Jesus. It's all about surrender, church. It's all about his ways of righteousness. Amen. Repentance, casting our cares, forgiving. It's all about his ways of righteousness. I know it doesn't sound easy, but with his grace, we can do it. With his power, yeah. you can do it if you keep yielding unto him. Um, last Sunday, after service, after I was done cleaning up and organizing, I sat in Brother John's Bible lesson, and he was almost done. But I like what you taught about having a quiet spirit. I enjoyed that. And it wasn't about talking less, right? It was more of the spirit. It is, a quiet spirit is a meek spirit, and I want to add this, it is an uncontrolling spirit. And I also like to describe it as a silent sufferer, where you endure your difficulties or frustrations in silence all by yourself. That the whole world doesn't need to know that you are suffering. And I believe that when we have a quiet spirit, we are acknowledging that we trust God to be the one in control during our difficult ourselves involves repentance, which is more than remorse, but it transforms us from the inside when we die to sin and to the appetites of our flesh and spirit. Then casting our cares is a continual release of our control as we trust in God to take care of our needs. And then forgiveness is also a release of our control over the person that offended us. It is dying to our rights in order to focus on doing God's will and to keep his peace abiding in yeah. us. I believe that there are some new things that God has revealed to us tonight. And I know that the first time that I received a teaching on covetousness, I started repenting and crying. I said, I am so sorry, God. I am guilty. So anytime that God reveals things that you are ignorant of, like I was, just repent of it. Amen? Then every day, you know, repent of, for example, any sin of covetousness that you might commit. Okay? Now that you have a revelation of it. Then seek God's grace. Amen? His godly sorrow to die out to yourself from the sin of covetousness and any other sin in 
Jesus name. I'm done. I think it would be good to spend some time in prayer right now as we respond to God's word.
we quench your mind right now and we quench yourselves. In the name of Jesus, let's quench ourselves from all the filthiness of the mind and the body and the spirit. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Would you pray in tongues right now, Father? We don't know what we should pray for sometimes, oh God. But the Spirit, oh Lord, within us makes intercessions with moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered, oh Lord. We appeal to your grace. We ask, oh God, for your strength to rest upon us. That as we die to ourselves, may you live in us, God. That it is no longer us that lives, but Christ that lives in us. That we live through your faith, Lord. Yo vi candale che te le andara la 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 boko sata la mayana casata la Ye kaye andara na 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 boko sata la yana casite In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Yo vi kata la mayana site le kaye It will only be by your grace so God you will only be by understanding, Lord, the process of having your grace work in us. And that process of dying to ourselves. If the great apostle Paul had to die daily, how much more you and I? If Jesus had to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane to subject his will to the will of the Father, how much more you and I need to pray? every day to subject our will to the will of the Father. For this flesh does not want to do the will of God. For the carnal mind is an enemy contrary to the will of God, the Word of God. Only by having a renewed mind would you pray that prayer, God, renew my mind. Lord, that I may be transformed by the renewing of my mind that I may prove that I might without a doubt be convinced, proved your good, your perfect will, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. That our own righteousness, O God, but your righteousness, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you to have a life of prayer. In all the busyness that you have in this world, you cannot neglect being in the presence of God. Wednesday night, Sunday morning is not enough. you got to have a life of prayer. There's no excuse. Romans 3. 21 says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ Jesus unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, 
to declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you affirm one more time in your belief in the power of the cross? Would you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Would you believe tonight that he took your place? That he died for you? That you might live? Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we exclude that a man is justified. We conclude, rather, that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? He is not also of the God of the Gentiles? Yea, the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaineth to the flesh has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath word of the glory, but not before God. But what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. When you believe God, he puts into your account righteousness. He begins to justify you through his blood, and the end is righteousness. And justification is a process. It's not a one-time event. As long as you're being, as long as you're alive. As you keep dying, the blood of Jesus Christ justifies you. And at the end, he gives you into your account his righteousness Amen. that will save you. For our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our works, our good works, does not merit the righteousness of God. That's why it says it over and over again. You cannot work your way to salvation. You cannot be good enough to be saved. So it starts in faith, believing that Jesus died for you, that he's covered you with his blood, and you believe in that work, that finished work of Calvary. And as you die to your sins, just like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, he died daily. We die progressively to our will. It's a battle of the wills. And as you progressively die, you're being justified. As you repent, God knows we're not going to do this perfectly. Nobody will. Only Jesus did it without sin. And so him knowing that we will not do it perfectly, he already made a propitiation, which is his blood. That if we sin, we can confess it and he is just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and we get back to that justification process and it is a process and in the end we will have the righteousness of God and all of this is possible through him it's not even our strength that's what dying does you have no more strength than God takes over and he lives through you. Amen. Not only do we need to understand that we need to experience that progressively, more and more and more and more and more every day, to where that becomes the reality in your life. That when you say, it's not me alive anymore, it's God, you, you have not only a comprehension in your mind, you have an experiential understanding of what that is. And we all have that because there are moments in time where we have completely surrendered and God takes over. And you feel like 
you wake up like, wow, I'm strong today. Why am I strong? Why am I struggling today? You know why? Because you died. And you've allowed the Spirit of God to live through you, to carry you. And there are days that you feel so alive in your flesh. And then you struggle. And God allows us to go through that so we can, no one will know that it's not our strength. He said that, that we have this treasure, this Holy Ghost in our earthen vessel, that the excellency might be of him and not of us. And we will know it's, it's not our strength, and we cannot boast of our strength. Right. And I think most of us have made that journey already that you already know you don't have any strength. Right. And that's a good thing. Because then God could flow through you without any resistance, without any pride. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to you. The Bible says it is God that causes us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. How can he cause us to will when we die to our will? There can't be two wills. There's only one will in heaven. And it's not going to be ours. God has chosen you. Remember that. God's chosen you. That means he saw something in you. He does not make a mistake of choosing people. The rich young ruler was chosen. He could have been another apostle Paul. But there was something there was something in his life that was not willing to surrender. To him it was riches. To us it would be different. Every one of us is different that we have to surrender. And God in his patience and his love will keep working in us until we convince him that we're not going to respond. And then he'll just lift his spirit, stop dealing with us, and we return to our base nature. And it hardens our heart just like Pharaoh. And I believe as Paul said, we expect your thanks of you because of the plan of God that he has for each and every one of us. And we believe God loves you. And we believe God is in love with you. He is in love with you. Hallelujah. Would you believe that? Would you just let that sink into your spirit. The God of heaven, the God, the creator of all things is in love with you. That's why it baffles the angels. And what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him and we've made him a little lower than Elohim, Lord of God, crowned with glory and righteousness and set him over all thy works, God is in love with you. Hallelujah. Father, help us to love you back. Would you pray that prayer right now, Father? Help us to love you back. This is a love relationship. Remember that. God, help me to love you back, Lord. For love to be complete, it has, been, it has to be received. The love of God has to be shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost has to be received. Willingly, and it has to be willingly given back to him. God is love, and you are the object of his love. The only reason why you are created is, is for God to love you, and he's hoping, believing that you could love him back. Amen. In Jesus' name. So we come to think about it, there's no scripture that he has ever once said that he loved the angels. And they don't have the freedom to exercise their will. We do, because that's that's really the only way you can love somebody. You can't force somebody to love you. And so the freedom to exercise, they have a will, but they don't have the freedom that we have to exercise their will. That's why when Lucifer sinned one time, that was it. Yeah. But here you and I, we are given freedom the freedom to exercise our will. And because of that freedom, we can come back to God and He can forgive us over and over again. And through the process of forgiveness, we become 
God willing, more and more like him. There was long lapses of time of falling. Does that make sense? Yes. Our goal in life to have long lapses of time in between falling. Amen. Coming short of the glory of God. And it's only by His Spirit that that is possible. Would you pray one more time? Would you thank him, Father? We thank you for your love for us, Father. We thank you for the clarity of your word. We thank you for dealing with us and not giving up on us, Lord. We thank you for dealing with us with loving kindness and patience. Your mercy, O oh Lord, that is new every morning. Thank you for dealing with us in a merciful way, and in a private way. Lord, hiding our sins, oh God, thank you, Father, for your goodness. Help us to love you back, God. Let that be our goal. The remainder of this life, to love you back, to fall in love with you. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In times of weakness, just mention the name of Jesus. He is as close as that. That's just the mention of his name. When you mention the name of Jesus, demons tremble. <laughs> Thou believest in one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe, and they tremble at that name. I release your keeping power upon your people, O oh God. Lord, unto you that is able to keep us from falling. Lord, unto your faithful God. Lord, we commit our souls to you, O God, as a faithful Savior. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you want to keep praying, keep praying. If you need to go, you can. But stay in the presence of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, God.